fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you still there? Aye! The Lone Ranger and Toto leisurely followed a trail that wound through the hills near the town of Jackson. According to the message I received from Major Osborne at Fort Davis, Toto, the gang that's been waylaying army supply wagons must have a hideout somewhere around here. Ah. The leader of the gang must be clever. He manages to avoid capture and continue the raids. We'll see. Look. Someone lying on the trail ahead. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Oh, oh, easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Let me see. He's still alive, but seriously wounded. The masked man and Indian gave first aid to the wounded man then took him to a nearby grove where they made him comfortable in a hastily constructed lean-to. Before long, the man opened his eyes and gazed at the two strangers who stood beside him. A masked hombre and an engine. You must be in with that gang who raided our wagons. We're friends, <laughs> not outlaws. Later, perhaps you'll learn about my mask. But right now, you need rest. But if you're friends, I want to tell you what happened. Very well. I, I'm Ben Hazen, the wagon driver. I was driving one of three wagons loaded with rifles and supplies to Fort Davis. There was four guards, soldiers with us. I see. Go on. But over in the valley near here, a large gang raided the wagons. I was shot when I tried to get away. We found you on the upper trail. They must have thought that I was dead like the others. After they loaded their rifles and supplies on the horses, they burned the wagons and left... I managed to walk and crawl up the slope to the trail through the hills, and then I passed out. I understand. But I have to get word to the fort about what happened. Wait, I... wait. You rest, Ben. You'll be well soon, but right now you can't ride. Otto, go to the fort and tell Major Osborne what happened. Oh. You mean it's in Valley, maybe? Now, ben can't be left alone, Tonto. Otherwise, I would. No, please listen to me. Now, I'll be all right. I got my gun. You just leave some water near me. I want you to go. Them outlaws must be caught. Now, promise me you'll go. Very well, Ben. I'll see to it that you're comfortable, then I'll go. Toto, I'll wait in the valley until you arrive with the major and the troopers. Uh -huh. Toto left hurriedly for the fort. 
Then, after making certain the wagon driver would be all right, the Lone Ranger rode to the valley where the raid had taken place. Oh, oh, easy. The tragic scene gave mute evidence of the ruthlessness of the outlaws. The burned wagons, the lifeless soldiers, and the bullet-ridden bodies of the other two drivers made the masked man more determined than ever to run down the killers. He was busy digging shallow graves when Tonto arrived with Major Osborne and some of the troopers. Well, my friend, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I wondered if you got my message. Glad to see you again, Major. We were coming in answer to your message when we heard about this raid. Ben, this masked man is a friend, one who will be of great help to us. I want you all to give him every cooperation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. And now, what do you propose we do, sir? Leave a few men here to bury the victims while we follow the trail of those outlaws, Major. That gang must be captured as soon as possible. Very well, sir. I hope we can find their trail. With the Lone Ranger and Tonto leading the way, the troopers followed the tracks of the outlaws along a trail that led to a river. When they reached the river's edge, the group stopped. Oh, 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 oh. oh Here's where we lost the trail the last time. Did you cross and examine the opposite shore? Yes. Their tracks went into the river here, but didn't show on the trail where it leaves the water. We searched the opposite side without success. I see. We'll cross now. If they've covered their trail and we don't find the tracks over there, we'll split forces and search both riverbanks in each direction. Very well. I hope we're more successful this time. All right, men. Get it back. Come on, Silver. Come down. Come by. A thorough search of both riverbanks was made, but without success. Dusk was falling, and the Major decided to return to the fort with his men until morning. After they rode away, the Lone Ranger spoke to Tonto. Tonto, we'll go to camp and see how the wounded man is getting along. Then when the moon rises, we'll come back here and continue the search. Uh-huh. Meantime, we need a few supplies. You ride from the camp to the town and get them. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Get off. Oh. Masked man and Indian rode to the camp. They found the wagon driver, Ben, feeling much better. The Lone Ranger waited at camp while Toto went on to town. Toto entered the general store and stood waiting while another customer was being served. Well, there's your coffee, mister. Anything else? Oh, that's about all. Got a buckboard outside? No. Uh, how are you going to tote all this stuff in? Got enough here for a dozen people, I'd say. What difference does it make to you as long as I pay cash for it? Oh, none at all. Didn't intend to rile you. Just curious, that's all. You being a stranger, I thought you might be working for one of the ranches nearby. Well, I don't. Stop asking questions and figure out how much that comes to you. I got it all figured out, mister. Twenty-five dollars and thirty cents. Thank you. Yeah. There's your money. Yes, thank you. Hey, engine. How about helping me get these supplies out to my pack horse? Uh-huh. Me help? Good. Here. Uh, see? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. We can handle it in one trip between the twos. Uh-huh. Come on. The stranger's saddle horse and the pack horse were at the hitch rack. Tonto helped tie the supplies onto the pack horse. <laughs> Yeah, I think that'll carry all right. Oh, here's a small package I put on the walk and forgot to pack. Here, stick it into one of my saddlebags, will you? Uh-huh. Toto picked up the small package and moved to the side of the saddle horse. As he unfastened the bag, his hand caught the edge of the saddle blanket, which was folded double. On a corner of the under edge, Toto saw part of a letter. But being familiar with the marking on government riding gear, he didn't have to see more to know it was an army blanket, stamped with the usual lettering, USA. Tonto quickly put the package into the saddlebag. There. Uh Now you're ready to ride. Uh, Thanks. Here's four bits for your trouble. No, no. Let me not take money. All right, if that's the way you want it. Thanks anyway. Uh, That nice saddle blanket. It new, maybe? Yeah. Why are you so interested, Injun? Let me get new saddle blanket someday. Get one same as that, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) I hope you have luck getting it. 
Yeah, see you again sometime. So long. Adios. Easy, boy. Hey. Come on, get up there. Come on. Get up. Tonto waited a moment until the man had ridden a short distance. Then he mounted his paint horse, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Long association with the Lone Ranger had taught Tonto to be very observing. He had noted the stranger's evasive attitude when the storekeeper asked questions about the large amount of supplies. And then, when he had noticed the new army saddle blanket, his suspicions were aroused. He decided to follow the man and see where he went. Maybe him outlaw. Get him up, Scout. Oh. The stranger rode into the foothills, and Tonto followed a short distance behind him. The moon came up and spread its bright light over the landscape as Tonto cautiously moved along the trail. The stranger with a pack horse went around a bend after passing some large boulders. As Tonto approached the boulders, he was suddenly startled. Up where you are, Rich! Oh, Scott. Oh, fella. Oh. Get up there. Get up. Oh, there. Oh. An engine, eh? Yeah. Why you shoot? Because you have no business on this trail. It public trail. Oh, yeah? Maybe you can tell me where it leads to. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, 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 easy now. Hey, what's the shooting about? I saw this redskin following you, Vic. Ever seen him before? Oh, yeah. He's the same one who helped me take the supplies from the store. Uh, got any idea why he'd follow you? No, I... Hey, wait a minute. He was interested in this saddle blanket. Said he wanted one and asked if it was new. What about that blanket, engine? Ever see one like it before? Mm, maybe me like blanket. Maybe he followed me, hoping to steal it. Don't be a fool, Vic. Take a look at that redskin's horse and riding gear. Look at that blanket under his saddle. Worth far more than the one you're using. Hey, that's right. He followed you for some other reason. Why did you, engine? Me not talk. Oh, you'll talk all right. You don't, I'll plug you right here and now. Hold on, Rocky. Keep him covered while I take his gun. Come on, boy. Get him. Yeah. He's got two of them and both beauties. Hey, something different about this engine. Look at those fancy buckskins. Rocky, maybe we'd better take him to Carl. If anyone can get the redskin to talk, Carl Pender can. Yeah. Go on, engine. Get him up. Come on, boy. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. A short time later, the two men arrived with Tonto at a hideout shack hidden in the hills. It was a large shack with two rooms. When they entered, the outlaw leader, Carl Pender, was playing cards with a few of the men. Fish! Rocky! What is this? Who's that Indian? I don't know. While I was on guard at the big bowlers, I saw him following Vic. So I got the drop on him. So he was following Vic, eh? That's right, Carl. And he doesn't want to tell why. It has something to do with that saddle blanket on my horse upon that out. He has a much finer saddle blanket of his own. An expensive riding gear. And what's more, you ought to see the paint horse he rides. Calls him Scout. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these guns, Carl. Oh. Fine guns, fancy riding gear, and a paint called Scout, huh? I remember a special paint horse by that name. Yeah, that must be it. I might know it would happen sooner or later. What? what do you mean? This Indian is clever, my friend. Very clever. He has been trained by a clever man. I have long known both of them. <laughs> Rocky, you have captured a prize hostage in case the army or the law should start closing in on us. What do you, what do you mean? Who is this Indian? He is the Indian friend of a much feared hombre. He rides with the Lone Ranger. Uh, the Lone Ranger? So, from now on, he shall be our hostage. And if we are ever hard-pressed, the Indian will die. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. Tonto had been captured by outlaws and was recognized by the leader as the Indian friend of the Lone Ranger. Meantime, the Lone Ranger waited at the camp with a wagon driver, Ben. The moon is up bright. Tonto should have returned long ago, Ben. That's right. It isn't far to Jackson. We intended to continue our search for the tracks of the outlaw gang along the river tonight. I'll ride toward town to meet Tonto. Oh, uh, you think you'll be all right? Why, sure. You've done everything anybody could do for me, mister. You rest some more until we return. We'll see you later. Adios. Adios. Easy, big fellow. Come on, sit there. The masked man rode to the edge of town without meeting Tonto. He stopped in a grove and, removing his mask, disguised his face so that he might go to the store and make inquiries. Finally satisfied with the result, he mounted Silver and rode into town, where he stopped in front of the store. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy. Steady now. Well, good evening, Missy. Here's some for you. I'm looking for a friend of mine who is to come here for supplies. An Indian. Hey, several Indians have been in here today. My friend came here about dusk. He wore buckskins. He's tall, well built. Oh, right. that too, and no, I remember him because he was different from the usual run. Then he did come here. Yep. But the strange thing is, he didn't buy anything. Didn't buy anything. Nope. There was a stranger in here, tough-looking sort of, mighty mean-tempered. Well. I bought a lot of supplies, enough for a dozen men. Got riled when I asked him how he was going to tote his bundles. He got the engine to help carry him out to his pack horse. Go on. Well, sir, I watched from the window, being sort of curious about the stranger. Well, after the engine helped tie on the stuff, the stranger rode away. The engine stood watching till he was almost out of sight. Then he ups and mounts and heads in the same direction, like he was trailing the stranger. Well, thanks for the information. Which way did they ride? Uh, toward the east end of town. Thanks. See you later. The Lone Ranger stood a moment in thought. Then he mounted. Easy, city, big fellow. Come He rode eastward through town, hoping to find Tonto's tracks at the edge of Jackson. But he soon discovered that any tracks left by the Indian had been covered by others. Oh, silver, oh. The Lone Ranger realized the uselessness of trying to find Scout's hoof marks on the various well-used trails branching out from the edge of the town. Then, thinking that Tonto might return to the camp, he put on his mask and rode hurriedly in that direction. Come Within a short time, the masked man arrived at camp. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, steady now. You didn't find Tonto? No, he followed a man out of town. He must have thought the man was one of the outlaws. We well, might run into trouble. There was about a dozen men in that gang. Yes, the first thing is to find their trail, then to get help to capture them. Once more, the Lone Ranger rode to the place where the trail forded the river. The masked man looked across the water thoughtfully. Earlier, when he and Tonto were with the Major and his men, it had been evident that the tracks they had followed to this point had not come out on the other side. We must have missed something when we searched before. But what? Well, I'll try again. Come, Silver, come boy. The Lone Ranger left the main trail and rode along the bank of the river. The troopers had searched that bank before and he could see the marks they had left. He was about to turn back as he approached a heavy growth of brush lining the banks. But Silver had already started through it and suddenly lurched into a shallow, water-filled irrigation ditch, which was at right angles to the river. Oh, oh easy, big fella, easy. The masked man's mind worked swiftly. He thought of what he might do if he were leading a gang and wanted to cover the trail. He saw the logical solution before him. They could have ridden along in the river, turned into the shallow irrigation ditch, and continued in the water to a cross trail. Then they doubled back. Yes, it must be it. I ride along the ditch and try to find a cross trail where they might have turned off. Come on, Silver. Watching carefully in the bright moonlight, the Lone Ranger finally came to logs bridging the ditch. A few planks rested upon the logs to form a culvert. 
Then he saw hoof marks leaving the ditch. He followed them onto a cross trail, and there before him were the tracks he had been hunting. He immediately started to follow what he now knew to be the trail of the outlaws. Come on, Silver. Sometime later, from a low ridge, the masked man saw the shack. Oh, sir, oh. The branch trail had brought him to the rear of the hideout, and he could see the shadowy outlines of horses tethered among the trees behind the shack. The lone ranger dismounted. Easy, steady now. And went forward cautiously on foot. Then he saw what he was looking for, Tonto's paint horse scout, securely tied with the other horses. The masked man realized it would be impossible to cope with so many. He stood a moment and gave a signal that he hoped Tonto would hear and would know that help would soon come his way. Then the Lone Ranger turned and hurriedly went back to his horse. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. In the shack, Tonto had heard the signal and understood. In the front room of the hideout, Carl Pender had also heard the owl hoot. He put down the pack of cards he had been aimlessly handling and listened intently. Did you hear that, boys? Hear what? Well, I didn't hear anything. That's the hoot of an owl. If it is an owl... You just said it was. What else could it be? A signal. A signal? That's right. Yeah, but if anybody was out there, the guard at the boulders would have seen him. Someone may have found the other trail to the hideout. The Lone Ranger's a very clever man. <laughs> Holy mackerel. You think he might be outside? It's possible. Rouse the rest of the men. Tell them to be alert for trouble. All right. Roll out, everybody. Uh, this is orders. Be ready for trouble. Oh, yeah. Come on, Chuck, boys. We'll make sure there's going to be trouble. I have my reason. The front trail is guarded. Huh? One of you go guard the horses. Another go guard the back trail. All right. For the rest of the night, we'll have our guns ready. Meantime, the Lone Ranger had set out for the fort, which was about a three-hour ride. He told the Major of the hideout. Later, he rode along with the Major and the troopers. My friend, do you suggest any plan of attack? We'll sneak up on the guards and silence them. Then we'll leave the horses a reasonable distance from the hideout and move forward on foot. Well, that should do it. But your Indian friend, they may kill him when they realize what is happening. Otto is my particular problem, Major. I hope to reach him before that can happen. Well, I sincerely hope you do. But for your cleverness, we wouldn't have found those outlaws. Thanks, but my main interest is getting Tonto from them. After we dismount, give me ten minutes start before you and your men move toward the shack. I'll try to get inside to Tonto. Well, if both of you were inside when we raid the place... It's a large two-room shack built of sturdy logs, Major. If Tonto is held in one of the rooms and I reach him, we'll be able to help from the inside. Don't worry about us. Move in and fight them to a finish. Come on, Silver. <laughs> It was almost dawn before the troopers silenced the guards and dismounted among the trees in a dense woods a safe distance from the hideout. Then, while the Major gave the necessary orders, the masked man slipped away like a shadow. At the hideout, Carl and his men still were alert for trouble. Hey, Carl, if anything was going to happen, it would have happened long ago. It's been hours since you heard that owl hoot. And in my way of thinking, it was an owl. Sure. Perhaps... But I have kept this gang from capture by being cautious and suspicious, my friends. And let me warn you, they have not had the Lone Ranger after us before. Don't forget that engine tied up in the other room, Carl. I'm not forgetting him. If anything happens, he will be the first to die. Tonto lay on one of the bunks in the back room, tied hand and foot. A lantern hanging from the rafters gave a dim light, and as Tonto gazed toward the window near him, he saw the faint glow of dawn. The Indian waited expectantly. He kept his eyes fastened on that window. Then he saw what he had hoped to see as the outline of the Lone Ranger cautiously appeared. No one was in the room with the Indian at the moment, and the window was partly open. Hello. Me here, Kimasabi. Me alone. Quickly and quietly, the masked man pulled himself through the window. Just as quickly, he cut the cords from Tonto's wrists and ankles. There, you're free. Here's one of my guns. Now, let me take it. Hey, I'll bring the Indian to you, Carl. I'll get... Hey, he's loose! The masked man's here! 
Hold it. The outlaws had started toward the back room at Rocky's cry, but it was then the troopers moved in. The shack was completely surrounded. The Lone Ranger and Toto prevented anyone from coming into the back room and demoralized the outlaws' defense by their blazing guns. Finally, it was over. The outlaws were subdued and disarmed. The wounded were attended to while the Major talked to the Lone Ranger and Toto. Well, we have them all, sir. My men captured the guards outside as we moved in on the hideout. I noticed rifles and army supplies in that large back room. Yes, that's the evidence we need to convict them of murder. The wagon driver at our camp will testify against them. Thanks to you and Tonto, we've broken the gang that has caused us so much trouble. We're glad we could help, Major. Carl Pender is a notorious gang leader and a clever one. But his outlaw days are over. Him plenty mean. They'll all hang for murder. And I'm mighty thankful you were not one of their victims. So am I. Tonto and I will go back to camp and take a horse for the wounded wagon driver. Bring him to the fort. We'll take care of him. Very well, sir. Adios, Major, and we'll see you later. Adios. By golly, it didn't take them long to find those outlaws, did it, Major? I knew I could count on them, Corporal. In my opinion, there's no one finer or more clever than the Lone Ranger. <laughs> is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendell, produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 